Hello everyone, this is an introduction video to my upcoming webinar this Sunday. The name of webinar is Chess Engines, how to use them correctly. And uh, But actually I have even more goals than named uh, in the title of the webinar. So I would like to share with you my goals and uh, tell you a little bit what is uh, what a webinar would be like. So the first goal that I have is to teach you the technical details of how to use the engines in a proper way because I've seen seen examples of strong players just using engines in a bad incorrect way <coughs> so I would teach you how to use all the cores of your computer to pay attention to the depth of the analysis uh, I would suggest you the number of lines that I prefer that computer in my opinion should consider. Also would uh, show you what is kilonauts per second and how to pay attention to it and which number in my opinion is uh, is a decent one to, to have a quality, a quality analysis of the position. So this is the first goal, some technical details. My second goal is uh, to shake your trust in the computer's engines a little bit because in my experience many people uh, just um, um, put absolute trust in what the chess engines are suggesting. I want to shake that trust a little bit so that you would be more critical and try to think on your own rather than just blindly listening to what they are suggesting. So I, I would show you some, some positions where they blunder computers can blunder believe it or not and uh, or they don't see the win while the human being can find it this is actually one of those positions so this is the second goal that I have the third goal is to show some positions in which you shouldn't listen to to computers opinion the positions where they get them completely wrong so the positions which they evaluate as equal but actually are lost or the positions that they uh, give huge advantage to one of the sides but they are actually a draw. So this is my third goal. And my fourth goal is to shake your trust in computers even even more by showing I have two, two good examples where human beings calculate in complicated position better than an engine and not top grandmasters uh, just actually one even just international master or even lower than that it's one of my games which I actually lost so these are my four goals to shake your trust in the computers to uh, force you to think a bit more with your own device uh, and um, show the positions in which you should be extremely critical to what they are suggesting because there is a huge chance the computer is getting the position wrong. I would show all the positions on uh, using top three chess engines at the moment. This is Stockfish 5 which is uh, the I think unofficial world champion now. Uh, second engine I'm going to use is Houdini 4 Pro also one of the best engines in the world and the third one is Komodo eight and I would show that each of them could be wrong very badly so this is these are my goals and now let's talk a little bit precisely about chess so while I was talking I hope uh, you looked glanced at this position and um, some of you may know this because it's quite a famous chess problem it's very beautiful and um, so let us take a look at the position. Um, the pawn on b2 is hanging, so black's rook is extremely active and strong. On the other hand, white's rook is a little bit cornered by the bishop, and uh, white is facing some problems here. So white needs to protect this pawn on b2, and there are actually two ways. One is straightforward, and second one is uh, slight tactics is involved. So one of them is knight a4, just 
protect the pawn and attack the bishop. And second one is in, involves a little tactic to go a4 and to meet rook takes b2 with a5. Since the bishop is pinned, so the approximate variation is like this. With the correct play, oh, sorry, I want to stop right here. For those who want to solve this uh, exercise on your own, you can stop the video and uh, calculate the line which starts with knight a4. After knight a4, for white, black has a very beautiful combination and if you find it, um, believe me, you will enjoy it. But it's a very complicated one. So if you want to solve it on your own, stop the video, solve it, and then go back to this introduction video. So in a, in a normal way, the game should have ended like this. a4, rook takes b2, this is approximate variation, but still the variation is the same. a5, bishop cannot move, because the rook is under attack, so rook goes back attacking the knight, takes on b6, takes, knight moves someplace, and c3, and the only w decent way to stop this pawn is just to take it, takes, and rook takes b6, and that's of course an equal rook endgame, this is a draw. Not much interesting here. So, uh, you may wonder why are we talking about this position and not about engines. I want you to understand this position first, and then I would turn on Houdini for pro and show you what does he think about this position. So a4 would lead to a draw. On the other hand, knight a4 is a big mistake for black. There is a beautiful combination. So which starts with rook takes b2, white has to capture, and now c3, and maybe some of you notice there's a x-ray from the bishop to the knight, so the pawn can come to c4 with a check, that's extremely important here. So for example, if white plays knight d3, black goes c4 check. And even if, if white takes the bishop, c takes d, and the pawns promote. So knight d3 is not the best. And uh, if knight moves someplace else, the pawn just gets promoted. But there is a strong inter intermediate move, rook takes b6, and if now black captures the rook, knight d3 stops the pawn. But black has unbelievable quiet move, c4, and now c2 is coming. The knight cannot stop this pawn. If the rook moves someplace, we would take the, the knight and win. If the knight moves, just c2 promotes. But there is still one more move for white. It is extremely strong move, rook b4. And now if black takes, we just capture on b2. If black plays c2, white plays rook takes c4. And black has another quiet move, a5, after which the rook should move someplace and the pawn gets promoted. If, if rook takes c4, c takes b2 and the pawn promotes. If rook moves down the b-file, pawn moves to c2, promoting. Black will get a queen, and if white takes on c4, c2, pawn gets promoted, rook is hanging, c1 comes with a check, white is in huge trouble. So this is a very beautiful known combination, which has adjusted a little bit on the king side. So knight, takes, knight, go, knight goes to a4, is met by extremely strong move, rook takes b2. And I'm pretty sure if you give this position to this position to a human being to choose the move and tell them it's it's an exercise, many strong players would find this combination. Now let's take a look what Houdini 4 Pro proposes here for white. Let's take a look. I'm turning on Houdini 4 Pro. <coughs> Let's take a look. What is the best move according to Houdini? Is knight a4. Knight a4 gives 0, 0.00. Pay attention to the depth. Depth is 18, 19. Still knight a4 is by far the best move. At what depth do you start believing what Houdini is proposing? Is it 2 seconds after you turn on your engines? 3, 10? 
which depths are you looking for when you listen to Houdini? Take a look, depths 21, and Houdini still prefers knight a4 as the strongest move here. We can wait longer to, to find out at which depth he would figure it out. Um, but I suppose we can continue. Let, take a look what happens if I play knight a4. Suddenly he pumps out, oh my god, I missed, rook takes b2, and now I'm lost. And the position is fairly simple, don't you think? Just two pieces on the board. So this is what Houdini is proposing here. First he thinks knight a4, and the second you play knight a4, it says I'm losing. What does it mean? You have to be extremely critical to what he's proposing and give him enough time to, uh, to, uh, to find the right move. So, now rook b2, he says black is winning because the pawn gets promoted. Now let's, let's go back again to the final position. And what I want you to do, I want you to be take, it not, take very seriously the depths of the analysis. Again, I'm turning on Houdini. I want you to really pay attention to this depth parameter. It's extremely important. For Houdini, on depth 21 that we just seen, he just blunders. It's not even not the best move, he can just blunder. So I really want you, if you're using chess engine, in this case Houdini, at least what you should wait is depth 21. That's the least bottom. This position, only two pieces on the board, and Houdini is blundering. Can you imagine what he can blunder if we add more pieces and more and more possible uh, moves are available? Uh, I'm not gonna wait now for a while. If you can see clearly that depth 21, it still thinks maybe now he will realize that knight a4 is a mistake. Oh depth 21, he realized that knight a4 is a big mistake. So, what I want you to remember, for Houdini, un until depth 20, he can just blunder. And uh, to intrigue you a little bit more, another thing that engines do wrongly is the evaluation. Now take a look at the evaluation after rook takes b2 give him a second to realize. Minus 2. Minus 2 and I suppose the, the evaluation would increase minus 2 and a half and it goes up. Believe it or not, this position is a draw. There are actually few ways for white to, to achieve a draw here. I'm not gonna tell you now, but what I want you to, to understand. One minute ago Houdini evaluates the position as 0.0. .0. And you would most likely believe, yeah, it's an easy draw. Suddenly it blunders and it gives minus 2.59 in black's favor, which means white is lost, right? What, you, what that what is you generally would think, right? But on my webinar, I would prove you that this position is still a draw, and you will see a number of other examples where uh, computer engines, the strongest computer engines that exist now blunder, evaluate the position incorrectly, can't see the win, uh, evaluate the draw if the position is a winning one, and etc. And I would teach you how to deal with it and how not to get get into trouble with those engines. So this is just a short preview of numbers of things I would like to teach you if you attend my webinar. So thank you for your attention. Hope to see you this Sunday.